ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد we begin by praising allah we praise him we seek his help and we ask for his forgiveness and we take refuge with allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions whomsoever allah guides no one can misguide and whomsoever allah leaves to go astray no one can guide and i testify that allah alone is worthy of worship and that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the servant of allah and his final messenger my dear brothers and sisters in islam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon you the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as is reported by at tamim ad dari and collected by muslim in his sahih this matter this matter meaning this matter of islam this religion of islam will reach wherever the night and the day reaches and allah will not leave on this earth except islam will enter every country every city every village every home by hook or by crook in another narration the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said verily surely definitely this religion will reach the boundaries of the day and the night and allah will not leave a rural or urban dwelling except that he will cause islam to enter it by elevating some and by degrading others a glory with which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates islam and a humiliation with which allah degrades disbelief ahmed and ibn hiban collected it it's an authentic hadith in another narration also in the sunan of imam ahmed the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said this matter will keep spreading as far as the night and the day reach until allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave a house made of mud or hair except that islam will enter into it while bringing honor to an honorable person and humiliation to a disgraced person honor with which allah elevates islam and disgrace with which allah humiliates disbelief my dear brothers and sisters these are words spoken by the one who is the truthful one that is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what he said was the truth and it will come to pass there is no doubt about that there will come a time as rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that islam will enter into every home even a home of hair even a home of mud even meaning a tent there will be a person in that home who is muslim this is what it means my brothers and sisters it doesn't just mean that people will come to hear about islam no allah will honor a person in that house in that home allah will honor them with islam and so in every house in this whole world there will be a muslim there will be someone who is honored whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to honor them with this religion of islam or there will be people who are disgraced with the disgrace that falls upon those who have rebelled and rejected and disbelieved in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and who have turned their backs on the way of life that will guide them to the eternal success of paradise my brothers and sisters understand may allah have mercy upon you 
that in reality, honor and dignity is in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives wealth. He gives money. He gives material prosperity to those he loves and to those he hates. To the believers and to the disbelievers. Do not imagine that material prosperity, do not imagine that wealth is necessarily at all a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. No, because Allah gives to those he loves and to those he hates, to the believers and to the disbelievers, to the pious and to the sinner, wealth comes to all of them. But Islam does not come except to those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them. And if you are a person of Islam, you are honored in the sight of Allah. You may not wear fancy clothes. You may not wear designer labels. You may not have an expensive car. You may not live in a palatial home. No, my brothers and sisters, maybe you are very simple and maybe your life is very simple. And maybe those rich people and those powerful people will pass you by and they will not even glance at you. Because all they see is the outward aspects of the life of this world. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is looking to your hearts. He is looking to our hearts. That is what is important to Allah. And he sees what is inside you. He sees what those people cannot see. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you and made you Muslim, it means that he has honored you. He subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored you with Islam. That is because he loves you. And that is a fact that you must always understand, my brothers and sisters. And we should seek honor. And we should see dignity in Islam because my brothers and sisters, whoever seeks honor and whoever seeks dignity in other than Islam, eventually, sooner or later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humiliate them. And that is the message, brothers and sisters, we need to convey to the human beings. The reality is that when we look at the Western world, and when we look at the Eastern world, and when we look at those people whose nations and whose countries are not following the deen of Islam, maybe there are people who will be confused. Why is it that they are wealthy and they are powerful and they are leaders in technology and science and education and material prosperity when we Muslims, we are backwards. We Muslims are not advanced. And this confuses them, but you should not be confused by that. And we must pass the message on to others. Don't be confused by that. Don't be confused by this illusion. Don't be confused by this mirage that is the life of this dunya, that is the life of this world. Because honor and dignity is in being a Muslim. Honor and dignity is in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Honor and dignity is that you follow his guidance. And the reward for that is nothing except paradise, my brothers and sisters. Jannah, paradise, that is the reward. A place where there is no age. No one will be thirsty. No one will be hungry. There will be no hatred, no envy, no greed. There will be peace and happiness, gardens beneath which rivers flow, palaces, rivers of delight, milk and honey and wine, beautiful companions. And the most beautiful thing of all in paradise is to be able to look at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how long will the believers live there? Seven million years? 14 million years, they will dwell therein forever. They will stay there forever, brothers and sisters. That is honor.
That is honor. And what is our life? It is just a moment. It is just like a part of a day we are here. And then we are gone. And the generations follow us. Subhanallah, brothers and sisters, you should read history. It is amazing when I hear a person who says, I'm not interested in history. History is so important. And when you read the history, brothers and sisters, you see the nations that have come and gone with their power and their strength and their buildings. We live with it surrounding us, the glory of empires. But what is left except ruins, brothers and sisters? They are a people who have passed away. So what did their might and their power and their technology and their science and their gold and their silver and their food and their drink, what did it do for them? It didn't make them live forever. Their civilization came and went like every civilization will come and go. This is the message we need to convey, brothers and sisters. This is the message we need to convey. And convey it we must. It is our duty, our obligation to pass this message of Islam on. That Allah alone is worthy of worship. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. That the day of judgment is true. That the paradise is true. That the hellfire is true. And that the way to paradise is by surrendering ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our duty, this is our obligation, that we, we need to pass this message on, my brothers and sisters. And if we don't do it, who is going to do it? If we do not call the people to Islam, if we do not invite the people to Islam, how will the message reach them? It will happen, brothers and sisters. It will happen. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Islam will enter every home. It's going to happen. There is no doubt about it. With you or without you. With me or without me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will cause Islam to enter every home and for a Muslim to be in every single home. And Allah will honor a person in every house, even a tent of hair. Even these buildings here, if they still exist, that, that you see, maybe some of you live in them. Every one brother and sister, there is going to be a Muslim inside. Whether it's a palace or whether it's a tent, it's going to happen. Because the Prophet wasallam never lied. What he received was knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here is the question. Do you want to be part of that or not? The opportunity is there. The promise is there. The Prophet ﷺ said that it is going to happen and the reward for it is there for our taking. The fruit is on the tree. It's ready for our plucking. So think about what Rasulullah ﷺ said to Ali ibn Talib before the battle of Khaybar. Before he dispatched the Muslim army to go and fight against the people of Khaybar, he said tomorrow I will give the standard to someone who loves Allah and Allah loves him. You can imagine brothers and sisters, everybody, the Sahaba, were gathered there hoping they were going to be the one. This is their ambition, this is their drive, this is their hope, this is their love. I hope that I'm going to be the one that the Prophet وسلم, gives the standard to. This is their mentality. Look at the way they are thinking. Their enthusiasm, their hope, their desire. Maybe Rasulullah will give me the standard. Not because my brothers and sisters, they wanted admiration. Look, I've got the standard. You see that? I'm carrying the flag. No, because they wanted to be the person about whom it could be said and he could be assured in his heart that he loves Allah and Allah loves him. Subhanallah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who did he give the standard to? He gave the standard to Ali ibn Talib. 
He gave the standard to Ali. And he said to Ali, he gave him instructions. And amongst the things the Prophet وسلم, said to Ali, he said, before you fight those people, call them to Islam. Call them to surrender themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if one of them, just one of them, brothers and sisters, just one of them accepts Islam, or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is important, if Allah guides just one person to Islam through you, Allah guides. It is Allah who guides. But if Allah guides one person through you, through your calling them, through your efforts, if Allah guides one person through you, that will be better for you than the red camels. And you know what? The Sahaba used to consider the red camels to be the best form of wealth. The red camels were the most superior and the best of all the camels. And the Prophet وسلم, said that just if Allah guides through you one person to Islam, just one person, it is better than all the red camels, all of them. It's like saying that if Allah guides one person to Islam through you, it is better than all the wealth of this world.